Most of our physical friends don't realize that when you ask, it really is given. That in the simple realization that you want something, that doorways open, pathways light up, all kinds of non-physical help comes into being, all kinds of circumstances and events and rendezvous, vibrational rendezvous take place in the moment that you come into contemplative awareness of something that you want. If you could see an aerial view, you would never again worry because in the slightest wish or hope, and certainly in those stronger desires, pathways light up that are so vivid that those of us who are aware of these pathways wonder why any of you would ever worry. And then we remember that the reason you worry is because you can't see the path. So we want to make you aware of it. We want you to feel the path, even if you can't see it. Esther will say to us from time to time, well, light it up a little brighter, will you? Make it a little bit more evident. And we say, you say that you want that only when you're standing in the darkness and you can't see the light. But when you're standing out there, tuned in, tapped in, turned on, you want everyone to get out of your way because you want to be the creator of your own experience. You don't want someone else doing it for you, but we just want to let you know. No one else is doing it for you, but you have infinite intelligence helping you along the way. And if you could just be a little less aware of what's not going right now the way you think you want it to be, and a little more aware of what is going the way you want it to be, so that you're tuning yourself to the highest frequency of your highest good, then those pathways would be more evident to you. And that, oh, that, oh, we want to stop for emphasis and punctuation. That is what the best of life is about. When you want something and you believe it and you're on your way to it and you're joyfully romping down the path on your way to it. When you go on vacation or you get on a journey, you get out on the road going someplace, you're not there when you first start, but you don't freak out because you're not there. You expect there to be some journey along the way. But we have to say, friends, we love you very much. You know what's coming after that phrase? <laughs> we love you very much, but you do complain on your journeys. You do. You complain on your journeys and we take that as a good thing, not as a bad thing. We mean it as a compliment in this sense at very deep level, sometimes so deep at very deep levels, you know, things are supposed to work out for you. You do. And when they're not, there is a sort of freaking out that is natural. We understand that, but we want you to know a whole lot is working out before there is a manifestation that you can show to others. And if you can be a little less hung up on the manifestation that you want to show to others and more tuned to the feeling of adventure, to the feeling of joy, don't you just love it when you want something in general terms and you don't exactly know how it will play out. Oh, you've got some ideas about how you would like it to play out. But the reason that you want whatever it is to play out in more detail is because you believe that in the manifestation of it, you will feel better. So you know how when you want something and it hasn't yet manifested, but you have this general sense of it and then ideas start to come to you. Don't you like that feeling of idea? Don't you like that feeling of inspiration? You do when that feeling of inspiration is accompanied or allowed on this basic platform within you of expecting good things to come. So if you could just develop a sort of general basis of beingness that goes sort of like this. I don't exactly know how it's going to be or who it's going to be or when it's going to be or where it's going to be, but I know that it's going to be really good and that I'm going to know it when I see it. In fact, I know that I'm going to know all the steps along the way because feeling your way to the next manifestation and the next manifestation and the next manifestation is what the most of your life is about. It's not about the manifestation and the manifestation and the manifestation. It's about feeling your way along your way to the next manifestation and the next manifestation. Hear that. That's really an important thing because if it were the other way, if it was just manifestation, I want it, boom, I want it, boom, I want it, boom, I want it, boom. We promise you this would be a seminar on de-manifestation. <laughs> I have 487 cars, Abraham. <laughs> the oil is seizing up in most of them because I can't get to them every day. I have more property than I have been able to visit. The rats have moved in. 
I have more stuff than is manageable. That is what you would say to us. There are more people in my life and there are more conversations to have than I have tongue to have them with. That's what you would say to us. But when you let your world be a vibrational world, which means it's an emotional world, which means it's a thoughtful world, now your world can be one that vacillates between comfort and ease and power and certainty and eagerness and clarity and passion and love and joy. In other words, you're up there on that end of the emotional scale. You're not having to dip into the contrast because you have enough contrast in that good feeling end. You like going from, oh, the satisfaction of not being overwhelmed to the exhilaration of having a little more to do right now than you really want to do. In other words, that's really a nice blend of emotions and you have the ability to control yourself in that way. But you've got to stop. You have to stop making it about the manifestation and begin making it about how I feel right now, how I feel right now, how I feel right now. Because you don't have control over the manifestation because you haven't exercised control over your vibration. But if you start making it about exercising control over your vibration, control over your emotion, control over your thoughts, control over your words, control over your general approach to physical life experience, what you're going to begin to notice is that you have control over all of the specifics of your life, not just what, but where and not just where but who and not just who but when you get to dictate every single part of your experience you get to call the shots you are the only one that ever calls it in and you're the only one who ever holds it out and keeps it from coming so do you have any idea we do and we're not mocking you well a little <laughs> do you have any idea how many experiences you have called to you that you're not allowing to flow with the ease that is possible and do you know the one reason why you're not allowing these things experiences people places events circumstances dollars to flow to you in the way that you want it's because you are fixated on the observation of what is and you are letting the absence of what you want in your what isness dominate your vibration, set up a vibrational field that holds it apart. So you've got this pull, push, pull, push, pull, push thing going on. I want it, but I want it now, and I want it yesterday, and I want it so much, and the not having of it has me upset. That's basically what your vibration, most of you, we love you so much. But we thought you might like to start this new year off knowing how to create your own reality because nobody else is creating your own reality you see that's why it's called your own reality your own reality you are the creator of your own reality which means you are the vibrator of your own beingness which means you are the thinker of your own thoughts you are the perceiver of your own world you are the attractor of your own experience you are the maker of your own life you are the uplifter of your own being. You are the magnificent genius creator who came into this physical body with the express intent of mixing it up, of looking around, of identifying what you want, of achieving vibrational harmony with it, and then taking glory, watching with reverence and appreciation and rambunctious zest for life, watching the components of your creation come into place one by one to in some cases surprise you and in every case delight you to the power and the clarity and the worthiness and the goodness and the readiness and the bigness of that which is you we love visiting with you we like so much a group like you gathering together people all around the world we're pleased that you're there too listening to our rampage of appreciation of the life that you are living your life that you are living but you can't live your life without those like us benefiting from your exposure to your life. Because when you look around and you have experiences and you revel with delight in some of them and you shudder in discomfort at others, in every case, whether you are cringing or applauding, you are focusing energy that is creating worlds. And as you do that, we are all in on it. We get to participate with you. That thrill that you have is our thrill that you are interpreting. 
But when you feel bad, that's you interpreting the absence of us. Absence isn't the right word because we don't go away. It is your pinching yourself off from the vibration of your source. That is really what negative emotion is. So have you been listening to us for a while? You know about vibration pretty much. You understand that law of attraction is the engine that manages all of this and that it is tuned to vibrational frequencies. Do you understand that everything has a vibrational frequency? Do you understand that your manifestations that will soon manifest have vibrational frequencies and that if before it manifests, you achieve vibrational harmony with the frequency of it, then it comes to you faster. Do you understand that abundance has a vibrational frequency? Yeah. <laughs> and can you imagine what it feels like? What would the vibrational frequency of abundance feel like if you were going to put words to it? It would feel like ease. It would feel like freedom to choose. Certainly it would feel like eagerness. It would feel like clarity. The vibration of abundance feels like fresh air. It feels like clear path. It feels unlimited. It feels always flowing. It feels abundant, 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 meaning never ending, always flowing. It doesn't feel pinched off and it doesn't feel like jealousy and it doesn't feel like worry and it doesn't feel like fear. It feels like fun. It feels like sureness. It feels like certainty. So let's say that you're standing in a what isness of less abundance than you want. If you can take your attention away from your perceived manifestation of not enough and you can focus upon something else that feels like fun or something else that feels unlimited. In other words, you can use subjects other than the subject of money, which may feel like not enough every time you think about it. You can focus upon other things that feel like fun, that feel unlimited, that feel like clarity, that feel like fresh air. You can practice the seed vibration of abundance by staying off the subject. If the subject calls something different from you, you see what we're talking about? A while back we said, if you're working on abundance, if abundance is something that is important to you, then take money out of the equation because there is so much abundance that is abundantly around you that you can tune yourself to the frequency of that. What's something else you want? Usually it falls into a handful of categories. You want money. You want a lover. You want someplace really great to live. You want a body that feels good. So let's say that your intent is for a lover who isn't there. A lover. What does a lover feel like? What does it feel like? What does being in love? What does a lover feel like? What's it feel like? High. Feels happy, feels high, feels <sighs> pretty damn good. <laughs> feels like well being, feels like homecoming, feels like security, feels like appreciation, feels like being appreciated feels effortless, feels like ease, feels natural, feels like desire. In other words, if you can get to the general vibrational reason behind what you want, which is what, why do I want it? The question, why do I want this thing will bring to you? Then you can, we know you can, you can begin practicing the vibration of the manifestation that is coming. Now, here's the thing that we know that often you don't know that we so want you to know. And that is that everything you've asked for is coming. And the only question is how long are you going to keep yourself from it? That's the only question. So do you sense, do you sense that we sense, do you understand that there is abundance, immeasurable abundance, not recognizable by most of you abundance not yet experienced let's just put it that way by most of you abundance for you vibrationally queued up and that all you've got to do all you've got to do the only thing you've got to do is to practice the vibration of it and it makes its way to you in so many different life-giving fun ways but you've got to practice the vibration of